picture this. Your water tests show perfect parameters. Perfect pH, GH, KH, ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, but your shrimp are still dying. This is an extremely common problem with tap water, but why? How can we have bad water when all of our parameters are in range? Unfortunately, there can be many invisible problems that aren't picked up by tests, but can affect our shrimp. For example, there can be chemicals that are fine for humans, but harmful to shrimp, like copper from old pipes. That can be picked up by tests, but only if you're actively testing for it. There can be excess nutrients that cause harmful bacterial growth or excess algae growth that destabilize your tank and cause problems for your shrimp. Or there can be molting problems because you may have the right GH, but the wrong mineral ratios in your water. Is there a way to solve all of these problems and gain control of our shrimp tank? The answer is yes, and we can do that with a remineralizer and purified water. What the heck is a remineralizer then? Well, first we have to explain a little bit more about GH. There are some common misunderstandings about general hardness or GH. GH measures the quantity of minerals in water, which is supposed to tell us whether there are enough minerals for shrimp to molt and build their shiny new mineralized shells. If the GH is in the right range for the shrimp species, then they should molt properly, right? This is wrong, unfortunately, because GH measures the quantity of minerals, not the quality. What do I mean by that, then? You see, shrimp need the right ratio of calcium and magnesium to build a shell with the right amount of flexibility that protects them from predators or very tiny hammers, but is also limber enough to squeeze out when it's time to molt. That's all the background info we need for this video, but we do go much further into GH and some of the misconceptions around it in our video, and of course our ebook if you wanna learn a lot more fascinating details there. On average, tap water in the US has a healthy mineral ratio of around three to one, but differing geologies change the ratio in each state, county, and even between towns. We have a way of testing this ratio on our website if you wanna check it out but it can be a hassle to deal with since the overall GH and the ratios can change seasonally based on rainfall and other factors. Ideally, we get complete control of our minerals and don't have to worry about them, which is where remineralizers come in. A remineralizer is a powder or liquid that adds essential minerals like calcium and magnesium into the water at the right ratios for our shrimp. All remineralizers do increase GH, but some of them also increase GH, so it's important to know which ones you need for your shrimp tank. For Neocaridina and many of the other harder water shrimp, you do want the GH and KH booster, but for soft water shrimp that want a lower pH, like Caridina, we almost always want to be using one that does not have any KH in it. These remineralizers can absolutely be used with tap water to improve the mineral ratio and up the GH, but we can get even better control and a safer environment for our shrimp by using purified water like RODI. RO stands for reverse osmosis, a process that removes 90 to 95% of substances from the water by pushing it through a sequence of filters. Deionization is an additional filtration step that may be added to remove those last few percentages of substances, leaving extremely pure water. Distilled water is another type of filtration that also creates very pure water. But hold on, this purified water seems great. Can we just add it to our tank? The answer is no. Life cannot survive in pure water. Cells absorb it and get ripped apart by osmotic pressure, basically imbalance of salts in the cell and the pure water outside the cell. Every bacteria, plant, and shrimp needs minerals to survive, which is why a remineralizer is critical with purified water. Hopefully, you can understand how useful a remineralizer can be, but is it right for your tank? Honestly, if you have the money for it, we would always recommend remineralized RODI water. We'll get into the exact costs later on, but the amount of control it gives you is unmatched, making maintenance and troubleshooting just so much easier. Is it necessary for success though? For many species, no. Remineralized water does increase the chance of success, but Neocaridina, Amanos, Bamboo, Ghost, Vampire Shrimp often do fine in tap water. If you do plan to use tap water, check with local hobbyists in Facebook groups or ask at the local fish store to find out if they've successfully kept shrimp in the local water. Even better, if they'll sell you some shrimp that they've adapted to local tap water, as this gives you the best chance of success. Softwater caridina breeds like crystal shrimp and Taiwan bees are the only ones that really shouldn't be kept in tap water because it so rarely has the right parameters for them. 
Additionally, a research paper has shown that even if the tap water does match the required parameters, Caridina often don't survive or breed as well in it compared to remineralized RODI water. But let's say we don't want to spend the money on the remineralized water initially and instead want to use our tap water. What are some signs to suggest that a remineralizer and or a purified water might help us in our shrimp keeping journey? Well, if the tap water has lower GH and KH than desired, then a remineralizer is a great way to increase those parameters. We could also use crushed coral or eggshells, but those offer less control and crushed coral honestly isn't much cheaper. Now, I do see a surprising number of people ask whether we can use a remineralizer with tap water, and the answer is of course yes. Purified water does help give you more control over your water, but there's no reason why we can't use a remineralizer to boost GH and KH. A second problem that a remineralizer might help with is the white ring of death or other molting problem. The white ring of death is a sign that our shrimp may not be getting the right mineral levels to molt properly. The best way to fix this problem is to completely replace the water in the tank with remineralized RODI water, but even just adding a remineralizer to the tap water can be helpful to balance out those mineral ratios as long as we're not pushing the GH and KH up out of range. As a side note, other possible causes of molting problems include a lack of cholesterol, which can be prevented by periodically feeding a small amount of egg yolk or bloodworms. A balanced diet with animal and plant protein also helps. This is another example of how remineralized RODI water can help with the troubleshooting process because it lets us immediately hone in on the dietary issue rather than worrying about a potential mineral imbalance that might be causing the molting problems. An additional problem that remineralized RODI water can help is with excess algae. Tap water often contains phosphates and other nutrients that can encourage algae growth. If changes to lighting schedule, feeding, or fertilization rates don't fix algae problems, then switching to remineralized RODI water may be your answer. Possibility four, another reason to switch might be unexplained shrimp deaths. If we're losing shrimp and the problem isn't due to obvious parameter imbalances or predators like planaria in a tank, then a common culprit is unhealthy water. The nutrients in the tap water may also encourage extra bacterial growth that puts stress on shrimp. That effect, combined with potential contaminants, can sometimes be enough to stress shrimp and even kill them. If we've tried other solutions and nothing's fixing our issue, then remineralized RODI water is a very safe and effective means of getting our tank under control. Okay, so we've covered what remineralized water is and when to use it, so let's go into the process of making it. Then we'll go over the costs involved with using a remineralizer and purified water. Then we'll discuss some tips and precautions to using it that you won't find anywhere else. Step one, acquire purified water from your grocery store, local fish store, or a home filter. Step two, add your remineralizer according to the instructions until you reach your desired GH and KH. Liquid remineralizers generally say they raise X gallons by X GH for each pump, while powdered remineralizers do the same based on the weight of the added powder. Step three, stir to mix. Liquid remineralizers dilute into the water very quickly, whereas powdered remineralizers can take a minute or two to actually be stirred in and dissolve. Step four, Measure the GH and KH to see if you got your desired results. Add more remineralizer if needed, or dilute with pure water to lower the GH KH. Step five, do a water change with remineralized water. Water changes are typically 10 to 20% for shrimp tanks, although you may want to do a larger water change if there is an imminent problem with the tank. One big change to get healthy water may be safer than letting shrimp sit in unhealthy water for longer. Now, let's go on to how much a remineralizer actually costs to use. A common complaint about remineralized water, and the reason why many people do choose to use tap water, despite the very clear benefits of remineralized water, is that it does cost quite a bit. And it's true that it's not cheap. In general, powder or liquid remineralizer costs $15 to $20, which is enough to raise around 1,500 gallons of water by one degree hardness. Most shrimp keepers want 4 to 8 GH, so we divide the volume by 4 or 8 to get the total volume of water remineralized. To put that in perspective, if we have a 20 gallon tank that we're doing 10% weekly water changes on, then the remineralizer will last between 93 and 187 weeks. Not bad for 15 to 20 bucks. That being said, don't be fooled by cheap remineralizers. Something like Equilibrium seems like a good idea at half the cost, but this amount actually only treats a third of the water volume. For the best bang for your buck, we'd recommend Salty Shrimp, SL Aqua, or Flip Aquatic Shrimp Align. So that's just the cost of the remineralizer. What about the water? That's actually where the biggest cost comes in. One option is to buy it from the local fish store, which costs around a dollar per gallon. For a 20 gallon tank with 10% weekly water changes, that adds up to $112 a year. 
distilled water from the grocery store costs around $1.20 to $1.50, adding up to around $134 to $168 a year. The last option to get purified water is to invest in an RODI filtration system like the four-stage RO Buddy for approximately 70 bucks. This unit just hooks right up to your tap and generates about a gallon of water every half hour, depending on your water pressure. Compared to the price and the hassle of going to the local fish store and lugging water back to your house, the RO Buddy quickly starts to look like a very good investment. Please note that you do want the four stage that comes with the DI filter, as that significantly improves filtration. There are cheaper options for filters, but none with as good of reviews for the price. Another note is that these filters do require replacement cartridges approximately every 1,500 gallons, so you'd need to spend roughly 35 bucks every 10 or so years based on that 20-gallon tank maintenance from earlier. If you're keeping multiple shrimp tanks or any expensive shrimp, then the price for this RO Buddy quickly seems to be a very good investment into their health. Now, on to some tips. Number one, don't add remineralizer directly to a tank. If a tank has shrimp in it, then the dramatic parameter change from adding a remineralizer directly will likely cause stress. It's too easy to add too much, and it's very difficult to remove the remineralizer if you do put too much. Remineralizing the water in a bucket outside the tank is always the safest option. Number two, liquid remineralizers are generally easier to use than powdered versions since they don't need to be mixed in as much. Number three, if you are using powdered remineralizers, try to avoid exposure to water and make sure you seal the container tightly every time you use it. The powder is made of a mix of salts like magnesium chloride and calcium sulfate that readily absorb moisture from the air, turning your powdered remineralizer into a block that can be annoying to use. If you leave the powder out in the open, you can actually see it melt as it absorbs moisture from the air. For this reason, I've started to put a desiccant packet into my powdered remineralizer, but I think I'm going to be switching to liquid just because it is so much easier. If you don't have a desiccant packet, you can always just get a little plastic bag, uh, fill it with some uncooked rice, and then poke a few holes in it so that there's airflow for the rice to absorb any moisture. Tip four, use a TDS meter to speed up remineralization. The first time we use a remineralizer, we always wanna check the GH to make sure we get the right parameters. Once the water is where we want it, we can check it with a TDS meter and record that reading, then aim to remineralize any future batches to that TDS. This helps because a TDS meter is just so much easier and faster to use than the liquid test kits or the test strips. And if you do wanna get one, we've got a link in the description below. Another important note here, is that every remineralizer uses a slightly different recipe to get their product. This means that water remineralized to five degrees hardness with different remineralizers will have a different TDS, and it may even vary between batches of the same brand. So that's why it's important to check every time you get a new remineralizer what the GH is and not trust the TDS at that point. This also partially explains why there are wide recommended TDS ranges for different shrimp species. Tip five. Use the same remineralizer used by the breeder, especially for Caridina shrimp. As we just mentioned, remineralizers have slightly differing recipes, and that makes for a different mineral ratio with each one. This generally varies between about two to three parts calcium to every one part magnesium. Most of them can adapt to these differences, but it does take some time. That concludes our tips and tricks for using a remineralizer. If you have any other tips and tricks, please leave those in the comment section down below. The last thing I want to briefly cover is whether we can make our own remineralizer. That's definitely possible, but there is some complexity to that of figuring out how to balance the right minerals without getting excess sulfate and other nutrients in the water that we don't want. So we're going to leave that for a future video. If you do want to see that as a future video topic, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comment section below. Okay, so that concludes our deep dive into remineralizers, what they are, how to use them, and when they're appropriate for your tank. If you've liked this level of detail, then you're going to love our ebook, The Science of Shrimp Keeping. With over 300 pages of information on parameters, tank setup, remineralizers, shrimp anatomy, shrimp breeding, basically everything you can think of, this book covers. We've cited over 150 scientific papers and translated that information into useful topics that you can use to get a healthier shrimp tank right now. If you want the complete playbook to create a thriving shrimp tank using scientifically backed information, then this ebook is for you and it's available through a link in our description. Buying it also supports us so we can continue creating great content for you. Thank you so much for watching and happy shrimping.